that struck fear in even the, the bravest of Native American Anishinaabe men. Recently I found what may or may not be an effigy of this fearful creature on the farm field. A little bit about him before I tell you about the artifact find or the effigy find. Mishipishu was believed to be an underwater panther and it was and still is by some believed to be a cat-like creature uh, with the head and paws of a cat, a tremendous cat, and uh, the horns of a bison, the scaly body of a snake with spikes along its back and its tail. The Anishinaabe people uh, believed Mishipishu's uh, lair, or home, if you will, nest, was in Lake Superior near, near the Mishipishu, causing problems for the Native Americans uh, throughout the Great Lakes. In particular, um, I'm most familiar with problems that it was that it's caused on Lake Huron, because that's closest to where I live, and I lived on Lake Huron for many, many, many years. Voice is said to emulate the sound of rushing waters, and it is one of the the primary spirits holding a high place among the uh, among the uh, spirits that the Native American Indians of the eastern woodlands and uh, and even even the southeastern part of the United States uh, believed in. While its main purpose was causing problems, there was one spirit that could hold it at bay, that had power over it, that could stop the evil that it would do, and that was the majestic Thunderbird. Now, the Thunderbird was, as I said, the great protector of the Anishinaabe people, the Ottawa, the Ojibwa, and the Potawatomi, as well as other tribe, tribal affiliations that were in the Great Lakes area. It is said that they live in the deepest parts of the lake. It, it stands to reason that it, that it would hide out in its lair or its... Uh, its a uh, nest away from the prying eyes of man. And so uh, that's where it is said to live. So let's talk a little bit now, though, about the effigy itself. Now, the possible effigy was found by me on one of the last trips to the, to the field Gil and I made before we decided on taking a mid-season break. Um, it might seem kind of silly to take a break when you're finding all kinds of things, but I think we both need a break right now. As most rock art, I have found this is quite abstract. The Native Americans here in Michigan did not do what you would call beautiful work. It was very, very abstract work. So when I show you the piece, you see, um, and I'm going to show you details on a picture that's over here or over there. Uh, here we have Mishipishu's head. Here we have one leg another leg and then we have a humped kind of spiny back and the tail is broken but it would have streamed uh, streamed off it would have been a, a little bit longer tail Lake Huron and Tawas Bay probably Saginaw Bay too um, has storms that are horrendous sometimes uh, it, the, the power of a storm like on Tawas Bay where my son David and I lived just across the road from uh, Tawas Bay, uh, not very far. But its its power was when there was a storm. Its power was uh, fear and fear inspiring. You could see these humongous waves crashing against the rocks there at Tawas Bay, and and it would actually make the ground vibrate. And I have to admit that. A few times that I walked over there when there was a bad storm going on, I was a little bit fearful. Um, it wouldn't take a lot to get swept into that, and if you got swept into that, I doubt that you would ever get free. But um, it was unbridled, raw rage. And that is what's believed is caused by Mishipishu, by the uh, swift whipping around of its of its long tail. and. Uh, so the Great Lakes storms are sometimes the fiercest of storms you could possibly be in, like the storm that took down the Edmund Fitzgerald years ago now. What would the purpose of such an effigy be? Well, it could be a personal uh, um, charm, a person, personal manito. Uh, it could be something that would appease Mishipishu by carrying it, perhaps, and, uh, and to show fear and reverence for that creature. Now, 
You see, a while, well, a long while back, there was a set of, um, oh, there were, I'm saying 20 or 30, discs found on near Thunder Bay in Alpena, Michigan. They were round discs. In fact, I did a, an article about them in the uh, Numismatic News a long time ago now. Uh, but uh, these, there were these discs. And each one, with the exception of a couple, each one was inscribed with a different entity in the pantheon of the Native American spirits that they believed in. And one of them was Mishipishu. And the other one was the Thunderbird. And so it's not, it would not be out of the question at all to find an effigy of such a creature. It was, he was important in their mythology. Now, it is said too that, 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 that Mishipishu was in control of all the fish in the waters, was in control of all the, uh, the water snakes, water animals in general. When I found that effigy, I found also this. It's a rippled rock or stone, and it looks somewhat like a snake or perhaps a wave. But in placement by the uh, by the effigy, it looks very much like the water snake that the uh, that Mishipishu had so much control over. So I just wanted to show you this uh, this effigy tonight, and uh, I hope that you'll. Uh, give it some thought and give me your opinions on what it might be. Is it, in your opinion, an effigy? Uh, what do you think, John Robinson? Is it an effigy? Or is it just a stone that caught my attention? Quite frankly, it could be either. Um, so, anyways, that's it for tonight. I will be back with you, hopefully, again real soon, God willing. And, uh, hey, y'all stay blessed, stay healthy, safe and happy. And remember, always, that we love you here at uh, the Dennis Morrison Channel. That includes the entire cat crew, too. So that's seven, seven cats. <laughs> Two of which go outside. All right. Love you all. See you later. God bless.